Hi guys, you might have seen the video in which I introduced my own base photo studio. If not, you can click here and then come back to this video later. Or anyway, I will link it in the description too. In that video, I was telling you about how to create your own base photo studio. But today I want to tell you about the pros, the cons and the, hmm, let's see about having a photo studio in your house. So let's get straight to the point and let's start with the pros. First pro is more money. Obviously, once you absorb the initial expenses to set up your studio, you can start booking your shoots at home. Lifestyle shootings, beauty and fashion sessions, corporate portraits, family pictures, more at your convenience, without the need to check the availability of the studios, getting stuck in traffic to get there, take appointments, making phone calls, and all this waste of time also. And all the money that you make, of course, it's yours because you don't have to share it with another photo studio. And of course, you can charge a little additional fee because you provide the studio. And especially when you shoot with the corporate clients, with companies, they already put in their budget the expenses for the rental of the studio. So why not put it in your pockets? The second pro is more portfolio or social media content. When you basically live in a photo studio, it's much easier to plan and execute your portfolio content. I give you two examples. I have an Instagram page about off-road camping adventures. It's called Luca Goes Off-Road. Follow it, otherwise... I will find you. And I will kill you. Two weeks ago, ARB, one of my sponsors, gave me a super beautiful jacket. So when I reached home, I created a cool picture with this jacket without getting too crazy organizing it. Second example, my girlfriend is probably one of the five most beautiful girls that ever lived in the history of mankind. So I decided to take some nice pictures of her. It took me two years to convince her, but only three days to organize everything and execute. We planned the styling, the makeup artist prepared some ideas for makeup and hair and boom, great images created in this beautiful and relaxed home environment. The third pro is more training and experimenting. For us photographers, it's vital to keep on experimenting with new techniques, learning new light setups. Otherwise, we stagnate and we become repetitive. When you live in a photo studio, you are constantly inspired to create something new. Approach pictures from a different angle, see how this specific fabric reacts when you use this type of light modifier, what's the best way of using a color gel when you use a fog machine in a slow shutter image because you want to create some light streaks and some special atmosphere sphere and the list goes on. While other photographers waste time partying and getting full sleeve tattoos to look good on TikTok, refine your technique for your next banger image. Because you earn trophies at practice, you go to competitions just to pick them up. The fourth pro is last minute shootings. A lot of times I get requested like, ah, I got interviewed in this magazine and I absolutely need the good pictures before tomorrow. And I say, yes, of course, what's the problem? Don't panic, easy, come here. The client will really feel that you helped him and he will remember how resourceful you were. Now imagine telling someone who's fighting against time, ah, yes, uh, no, maybe one second, uh, let me call the studio, let me check the availability, uh, one second, no, this is busy, uh, do you have a nice corner at home where we can... Pfft. Ah, doesn't work. Fifth pro is the weather. Depending on where you live, there might be months in which shooting outside can be a real nightmare. And if you're good with photo compositing, you can shoot in the studio and recreate after with Photoshop outdoor environments. This might be a little bit of a stretch and can apply only if you are really good at compositing, but still, you can try to convince the client to shoot indoors until the season is good, or with the help of um, props and uh, some nice objects, you can recreate an indoor setup inside your studio. Again, waiting for the good season when you will actually shoot outdoors. At the moment of recording this video, outside there are 43 degrees Celsius, Fahrenheit, so for me, having a studio, it's crucial. And now let's talk about the cons. When you have a home-based photo studio, there are entire areas of your house that cannot be used for anything else. My studio, where we are now, is actually a living room. My laundry room is now the storage for props and equipment. The smallest bedroom is now my office. And I had to use another bedroom as a living room which for me is okay, but it might not be the right solution for you. Especially if you have a family and they need their spaces and you don't live in a 35 bedroom mansion on four floors. Depending on your lifestyle, a home-based photo studio might be a little bit of a problem. Second con, you need an entire setup that you will not use for anything else. 
if you shoot at home but also on locations you don't want to dismantle everything every time that you have to go in and out so consider the initial expense for at least three lights one system a few modifiers some boom arms and some little accessories that you might see in my video on how to create your own base photo studio you might think that you can save money by setting up and dismantling every time that you need to go shoot somewhere else or you have to shoot again at home but it will not work because after a couple of times you will really be fed up so you will want absolutely to have a setup always on at home and a bag with your gear ready to go when you go shoot on location. This will make you more efficient, but of course you need to consider the initial expense for this. The third con is burglars and housebreakers. I live in Dubai, so for me it's not a problem, but if you don't live in UAE, uh, Qatar, Oman, Taiwan, and some areas of uh, Switzerland, you really need to consider the safety aspect. Burglars will eventually know that there is a house full of valuable photo equipment and they might be interested in paying you a night visit or they could simply follow you on Instagram, check your Insta stories and clean your apartments while you are posting your flight tickets. And for them, this is even easier if you live on the ground floor or in a villa. So consider safety when you build your home photo studio. And now let's talk about the mm, we'll see. These are aspects that you can't really predict or factor in the equation until the studio is up and running. The first is, what about big brands and high-end clients? Will you be able to create an environment that looks professional and doesn't disqualify you in front of high-end clients? Will they have the impression of entering a cool photo studio or a moldy basement? Will you feel confident enough to let them come to you? I give you two examples based on my previous experience. I shot a billboard campaign for Elisab and one for Estelle Oder. In the first, the client was not on set and we did everything through Zoom, screen sharing and stuff like this. But in the second example, the client was on set. My previous photo studio was a small room on the second floor of the villa where I used to live before and it was between one bathroom and my bedroom. So I had no problem shooting the Elisab images because I was there just by myself, but it wouldn't have been very appropriate to bring the Elisab people in my house. So we had to rent a big studio in Dubai and we shot there. Now, of course, I wouldn't bring the representatives of a world famous brand to shoot here in my house but now the studio has a kind of cool factor that allows me to be more confident when I bring here big clients. The second mm, we'll see is, will the studio make enough money? A nice photo studio requires a bigger home, some cool accessories, equipment, AC always running, cleaners coming more frequently and stuff like that. Will your studio make enough additional money to justify the additional expenses? If you do a lot of portraits, food, still life, most probably yes. If you're a sports, automotive or landscape photographer, most probably not. But maybe a photo studio will encourage you to expand your offer. Or maybe if objects, people, food are not your thing, you will end up not using the studio enough. So this is something that you cannot know unless you try it. The third and more important mm, we'll see is who are you letting in your house? This is the most delicate point in this list. At the end of the day, even if it's a photo studio, it's still your house. So you always must be careful and aware of the people that you're letting in. Sketchy, dodgy people might start looking around in a strange way, looking at uh, equipment, windows, locks. Others can have an inappropriate behavior. Others might threaten to ruin your reputation if you don't give them free pictures. How do you protect yourself? Do you install a security camera? Do you find a way to screen your clients before letting them in? Will you try to always have a witness with you to prevent unwanted situations? Think about it. And that was all for this video. I hope I gave you some useful insights. If you have any questions, write me a comment. If there are some pros, cons, or mm, we will see that they didn't consider, let me know. If you found any solution or have some experience about the mm, we will see also, write it in a comment. If you like what I do, you can follow me on Instagram at Luca Lombardi Photo. You can take a look at my website, lucalombardifoto.com. Share this video with your friends, put a like, and all those things that people on YouTube always ask. Thank you and see you soon.